This is a hint from Howard, Restorative Problem Solvers on Fiber Reinforced Composites. I'm Howard Strassler. Embedding fiber ribbons in composite resin allows us to restore teeth in a variety of ways to achieve a clinically successful and long-lasting results. There are a variety of different fiber materials that one can use in dentistry to include the splinted material, the glass band material, uh, and the ribbon and ribbon THM. These fibers have different fiber configurations. They're made from different types of fiber materials. The ribbon THN and the ribbon are made from a high molecular weight polyethylene. In fact, they provide us with the greatest strength properties and the greatest resistance to fracture resistance for our composite. Also, they're lock-stitched weave, as you can see from these uh, scanning electron micrograph images, that this overlapping weave means that the material won't unravel when cut, and this material acts as a crack stopper. And when I say a crack stopper, I'm talking about these nodes of this uh, lock stitched weave that when a composite occurs in the com uh, when a fracture occurs within the composite resin those lock stitch weaves the red highlights on this image uh, stops the crack from permeating through and through in the composite we get greater, greater strength properties longer durability so what are some of the clinical uses for this fiber reinforcement material? When these fiber materials first came on the market, they were replacing uh, metal mesh uh, and nylon mesh materials for peridol splints. We realized quickly we could use these for fixed partial dentures that are directly placed clinically using either an extracted tooth as a pontic or a composite resin tooth as a, com as a pontic. We can use these to fabricate fixed partial dentures, uh, provisional materials that are stronger and longer lasting for those cases that are much more involved. And we can also use it for restoring endodontically treated teeth or large cusp replacement restorations, making these restorations uh, stronger, more fracture resistant, making the tooth more fracture resistant. Well, splinting was our first use, and the rationale for controlling tooth mobility with periodontal splinting is due to primary occlusal trauma, secondary occlusal trauma, or what we typically see, progressive mo mobility, migration, pain on, on function that our patients complain about. They complain about spacing of teeth. And in fact, what we do know is that periodontal splinting improves treatment prognosis. The research is very definitive. You splint highly mobile teeth, and you'll improve the periodontal prognosis of those teeth. And in fact, the decision to splint the teeth to control mobility uh, will improve prognosis, but typically it's the patient discomfort uh, the patient complains that they can't chew or bite into food, uh, and decreased uh, occlusal and masticatory function. Uh, sometimes the patients complain about that their teeth are spacing apart, especially in the maxillary anterior. And we can step in and splint these teeth with uh, fiber-reinforced composites. So let's take a look at some cases for the use of fiber-reinforced composites. For this patient, uh, we're going to do some periodontal splinting, and their chief complaint was discomfort during typical function. Our clinical findings showed loss of gingival attachment, some recession. The incisors had grade 2 mobility, the canines less than grade 1. And you can see from uh, the radiographic image that we're seeing uh, about 30 5%, 40% bone loss for this patient. 
So our decision is to splint the teeth. We place a dam, rubber dam, it helps isolate because these are adhesive procedures, and I will tell you it's the easiest rubber dam to place. We need to know the length of fiber ribbon we need, and so I use dental floss. Placed on the facial of the teeth, the length from the distal of the lateral incisors to the distal of the laterals, because on the inner circle of the lingual of these mandibular anteriors, uh, we're going to actually extend to the uh, mesial of the canines. Uh, for me, and I've been using uh, Ribond and Ribond THM since the, uh, the early 1990s with a great deal of success. I've used many of the other materials I find from my physical property testing, the research with these materials, that Ribond THM is thin, it's durable, it provides all of the characteristics I want from a fiber reinforced composite. And when cutting these materials, this high molecular weight polyethylene, basically the same materials used in bulletproof vests, bullet resistant vests, we need to use the special scissors, which are autoclavable, that are provided with the material. I typically use two and three millimeter wide uh, ribbon THM. And so I'll be etching the teeth to provide for uh, adhesion both on the facial and on the lingual surfaces. I then use a block out with a polyvinyl siloxane, a medium body or heavyweight fast setting material. The teeth are etched first. This gives me an anatomic block out and I would refer, to, refer you to uh, articles and, uh, and some of the uh, websites for these companies for you to take a look at these types of techniques. I place composite on the facial surfaces to provide that these mobile teeth don't rotate or aren't intruded. I lock these teeth in with an aesthetic composite on the facial surfaces. And what this also does is that when I place the fiber on the lingual, I'm not going to push these teeth facial and for these lower incisors to interfere with the occlusion. I then go to the lingual surface where I place a thin band of composite on the lingual from uh, mesial canine to mesial canine. I thin out this composite. I've picked a two millimeter wide rib on THM that I'm then embedding into the composite resin. And you can see how that uh, PVS material in the embrasures uh, will make sure no composite gets in there. Uh, and then I complete the entire procedure. And I'd recommend that you go to articles online or uh, that you look at websites, the ribbon.com website, to see some of the step-by-step -step for these techniques. The final splint that I've placed has minimal bulk. It improves occlusal function. Uh, it means that the patient has no more discomfort. I have no mobility. It's highly hygienic. In fact, when I pull out the PVS material that was blocking out the embrasure areas, you can see how I have an anatomic embrasure area with no finishing at all. And let's take a look at a long-term case. So here we have, in this case, probably 80% bone loss. Uh, fortunately, it's opposite a a removable partial denture, but after periodontal scaling and root planing, oh, we go in and we place the splint. Here is the splint at a seven-year post-operative recall. And you can see that uh, on a case where we would have considered those incisors hopeless, we're improving the prognosis. We're also using this fiber reinforced composites uh, for this case using a natural tooth pontic bridge for the same day treatment. You can have the lab pre-prepare and create uh, a pre-made fiber uh, bridge to be placed uh, using a composite pontic uh, and get a similar result. But for this patient where they have 100% bone loss around that uh, central incisor, uh, we're going to remove that teeth that day. We're going to do scaling and root planing. And on the day we remove the tooth, we're going to cut the tooth down to the length incisal to gingival. And in fact, this is the day we extracted the tooth. We fill in the root canal with some adhesive composite. Uh, and then we're going to attach the tooth into the crown. Uh, we're not doing the whole splint yet. We're just putting a single tooth in the crown, locking it in. We've etched the adjacent teeth and placed it in. Uh, 
we measure the fiber to length and the area where the pontic is we have a small piece. Uh, for the periodontal splint we have a longer piece and the reason for the smaller piece is we're creating a double thickness of uh, ribbon THM in order to create uh, our connector to be more rigid. We then go in and place the fiber. Now on the pontic there's a channel and that channel uh, is the same uh, position as class 3 preparations on the adjacent teeth. The black denotes where the smaller piece, the pontic length, will go. In the class 3 is in the channel. The longer piece is from our uh, periodontal splint that goes from the mesial of the canine to mesial of canine. We do the same exact technique as we would for uh, a typical splint alone. And so we place our, we've etched, we've uh, done our block out, we place our adhesive, and we place the small piece in the class threes and the channel for the pontic. And we don't like cure yet. What we then do is then place our composite everywhere else, thin it out, and place our periodontal uh, length uh, fiber ribbon, and place that in place. So now we have both fibers placed, we keep it very thin, and we light cure for 20 seconds. And here's the final fixed partial denture. And as you can note, uh, we have a natural tooth pontic and the fixed partial denture. And the question is, how long will these things last? Well, here I've recalled the patient at 36 months, uh, and the pontic is doing well. In fact, the prognosis of the teeth have been improved. And so for this case and the previous case, we've been both splinting and for this case uh, put in a natural tooth pontic. For the other one, we improve tooth prognosis through periodontal splinting. Now, a really innovative use of fiber reinforced composites is for large preparations and endodontically treated teeth. Uh, imagine that the patient uh, is getting a molar endodontically treated, has a large need for a restoration, but they can only afford a directly placed restoration, or you're creating a core and want additional reinforcement of the teeth. Well, the research that's been done has demonstrated that if we place a fiber liner uh, within the tooth preparation itself, or within an endodontically treated tooth, we're going to improve the fracture resistance of that tooth and the cusp fracture resistance. And there's been significant research demonstrating that fiber reinforcement makes a difference on these large preparations and for large endodontically treated molars. And so here's the example. We're going to cross splint an endodontically treated tooth. We're going to place an internal fiber within the pulp chamber and up against the tooth walls of the tooth, uh, in this case the buccal end, around to the distal uh, within that pulp chamber. And here you can see the fiber being wrapped in. We're using a, a two millimeter wide piece of fiber. The tooth's been etched, adhesive's been placed. We've placed some flowable composite. We're going to place that fiber up against the walls of the pulp chamber and the tooth. We're going to light cure it for 30, 40 seconds in order to get the light to travel and provide the energy to light cure that. And then we can do our continuing composite restoration either with a dual cure composite, a self cure composite, or building up increments with a light cure composite to get a result like this. We can prepare this tooth for a crown or if the patient has to delay getting a crown or you're concerned about prognosis after the endodontic treatment. These composites will last a long time. Uh, I have some cases that are now going on seven to eight years with a lot of success. Now, you've just been viewing a hints from Howard on restorative problem solvers of fiber reinforced composites. This has been Dr. Howard Strassler.